Howard I learned, Ed Doffus, and Howard Jones Jr. wrote a book with that title, so it's hard to forget. I'm going to tell you also, if you're listening to me, Ed Doffus, when I say it, it's a Greek word, and it's E-D-A-F-O-S. I'm saying that because if you look up the book, I want you to know how to, to spell the title, and many of you are probably laughing because you already know what the word means. Howard Jones Jr., how are you, and thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, um, uh, thank thank you for having me. So, uh, tell me about the book. Why did you write the book? Yeah, well, the initial reason why I wrote the book was that at first, when I was in high school, I wanted to get into game design and to kind of keep some of the ideas. I just kind of chronicled them down into you know my you know my four or whatever. And eventually, once it got through and finished, my guess my father knew about it somewhat and contacted some publishers and that's kind of how it got started so when i by the time i finished it i was a senior in high school ah so the the question is before we dive deeper into the story were you a big gamer were you into games that whole kind of thing oh uh, yeah i've, I've kind of always been into that you know and that's kind of what because a big thing i've realized growing up is that you know one of the mediums of storytelling isn't just relegated to books and you know oral storytelling one interesting way I found medium for storytelling was, you know, through games. And, you know, one of the big influences specifically for, specifically for Edaphos would have probably been, like, the Elder Scrolls series, namely Skyrim, which was probably, like, a big influencer, especially in the Nordic culture of my main character of the book. Yeah, so in developing that main character, um, what was that like for you? Because you, I think you have to ru- let your imagination run wild, right? Um, yeah, like, um, I was actually put a lot more effort into it than I would probably have seen because one thing I wanted was a main character who wasn't so powerful, his challenges didn't seem that real or dangerous, you know? So a big trait of my main character is that he has to rely on his charisma and his, you know, leadership skills and other things about his character. Because, you know, in the group of adventurers that, you know, the readers will follow in the story, he's surprisingly the weakest person. I, by no means weak, as in, because he's still a skillful swordsman, skillful fighter. But, you know, he doesn't, he lacks the powers, I guess, because of magical abilities that rest of his friend's house. Yeah. And again, we're speaking with Howard Jones Jr. Adolphus is the name of the book, Divine Win. That's where you'll find it on uh, Amazon. And in coming up with the sword fights and a corrupt, corrupt kings and religious struggles and my goodness um what a vivid imagination that's what i was referring to to uh in the last question like how do you come up with this uh, this world and part of that i think has to come from gaming and getting in the gaming mindset of anything's possible and it's a different reality so do you think that is part of it well ironically enough like to some degree i guess you could say it's the opposite or maybe a mix of Whereas a big thing that I do besides gaming is I, I, really like, I read and enjoy like a lot of history. So one of the big influences when it comes to the events, cultures, places, and people in my stories is, you know, history, or I guess because it's like an alternative look at it, you know? So a lot of real-life history kind of goes into some degree of my world building or some inspiration of it. And um, in writing this book for, you know, you're there in beautiful St. Thomas, which now everybody's incredibly jealous. What a beautiful place to to grow (laughs) up and to be from. I mean, you got to know that, man. Uh, It's so chill and the people are so, so friendly. And I can only imagine your squad, your your group of friends. What do they think of you getting this book published? Um, Well, at first, the first time, like, I remember I could remember this exact day when I got it. I showed my one friend the book, and he saw the book, and he was just there, like, yeah, I wrote this. And my other friends was like, yeah, yeah, he wrote this. You see this? And my friends were like, no, 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 no. And he just walked off saying that. But, you know, later on, it kind of became the thing of me just being known as the writer. You know, everyone knew me as the writer in full, and even outside of it. And they will often, you know, you just say I'm having difficulty with an assignment that's writing. It will always go back to what you're a writer kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So um, they're busting your chops. You've got this book. You, um, I would imagine, want to do do more. Do you think there's more books in the future for you? Oh, yeah. That's like right now, I'm actually working 
kind of on two projects where I'm um, working on the third book of Edifice, which will be known as Edifice Black Blood, which will mm-hmm. be our conflict more centered on like the God like beings of the world known as the divines in the story. You know, it's where their own conflict kind of seeps into what the mortals have to deal with. And, you know, I'm going to have way more books on the series and stuff like that. And as well, I'm working on something that's more local, but it's more of a fantasy story based around the island itself, which, you know, which I've finished the first book, but I haven't done work in publishing it yet. But those are two things that I have, like, working on on the way. All right. I love that ambition. Your father has to love that ambition, does he? Um. I mean, yeah, I would, I would feel so. I would feel so. I mean, I guess he was the one who got this all started because, you know, publishing, book writing, all that stuff was not even a consideration. But once he saw this whole, you know, 300-something page document, I guess he kind of thought that there had to be something more to it, something that could be done about it. Yeah, there you go. That's good to have that that uh, backup from the family. So when people read Edifice, the Divine Win, this first one, what do you hope they take away from reading it? The people that are listening to this conversation here in the United States and across the world, what do you, what do you hope they take away from it? Well, um, I feel like I didn't really have any massive, like, you know, moral or story or team. It was mainly kind of just, you know, as is a story of that world. Though, you know, the different situations that the characters will get through and go through, so, you know, as corny as it sounds, the value of friendship, the value of teamwork, positivity, those types of things, as well as the need for us as people to, well, probably not violently, of course, but to stand against things that may not be good in our society, things that, you know, we may have the power to ask and talk about, you know, because that's what my main characters do. They see problems in society and generally will try to rectify it in whatever way it allows and fits for that culture. Yeah, there you go. That's a perfect place to to finish this. We wish you the best. And Howard Jones Jr., good luck with that second book. You can get the book on Amazon. And thanks for coming on the show. All right. Thank you. All right. I love that the title is unusual and it makes it stick out. And, of course, Howard explained uh, why that is and what that means. And Edifice... um, is really does take you on um, a journey. This is a book that really anyone could read, especially as he mentioned history so big that makes sense. History combined with his, his love of gaming in a way because of how the thing that I think that's good about gaming is the imagination, the, the, um, the stretching of the, the realms. But as he mentioned, not to confuse that with that, he likes to read history, that he is a history buff. And so that makes sense when you, when you read the book, you know, we're talking about, um, the realm of of Adolphus, and that it's been peaceful for about 300 years, you know, uh, after 300 years of, of war, um, actually. And a war to conquer the land started by the godlike beings called divines. That's then part of the title and makes sense. And through unbearable, unimaginable pain and crazy suffering, they finally get peace. So again, remember what I said, you think of wars and you think of history and you think of 300 years of war. And then how much after that, uh, they had peace. So, and that was about a century, right now you throw in these corrupt Kings. And I mentioned that to him and you mentioned the religious battles and how you've got one boy whose path was on the road to conquer uh, I think it's Cardia, uh, rebels against the ideals of the uh, of the um, of his people. So look at those themes, and what are those themes that you think about? I was just thinking this. What are th- I was even thinking like Game of Thrones. I'm thinking of of things that I've watched series, but also like Howard, I'm a, a history fan, and in mixing that story, and I I don't want to. Um, give too much away. It makes sense because there's it is steeped with things that we've heard or talked about or learned in history. So absolutely fascinating. And imagine you're sitting there in St. Thomas, beautiful St. Thomas, and uh, he's writing away and now he's got more in that series to come. So thanks to all of you for listening to this interview and of course, listening to this version of